there is so much speculation around what the Steam Deck 2 could be, what Valve's next generation hardware could be. Many people would believe that the Steam Deck 2 would have next generation AMD hardware. But in the last couple of days, we've seen some interesting developments from Valve, especially in regards to ARM. So what the heck is going on? Before we can start talking about this video, we have to talk about what ARM and x86 are. x86 is the architecture of CPU that you're definitely familiar with. It's in your computer, your laptop, your Steam Deck. Heck, it's even in your console as well. The entire architecture was invented by Intel and was further improved upon by AMD. And as such, both Intel and AMD are co-licensees of x86-64. It's a long story that I'm not going to get into today, but all you really need to know is that both Intel and AMD contribute to what constitutes x86-64 today. And there's only one other company that has a license to make x86 processors, that being VIA Technologies. But they're not important today. Your Steam Deck is based on an AMD APU. It runs PC games, and you know, if you wanted to install Windows on it, you could. And of course, home consoles have pivoted towards using x86 hardware. Both your PS5 and your Xbox Series X and S use x86 hardware also from AMD as well. As you all know, PC gaming is huge, and I would say 99% of PC gaming is on x86. But of course, in like the last 15 years or so, there's been another architecture of CPU on the rise, ARM CPUs. ARM is best known for their CPU designs. They license out these processor designs to companies like Qualcomm and even Apple, and they don't make a single chip themselves. You'll see ARM designs in a wide variety of different devices. While ARM CPUs came to the mainstream with the advent of mobile devices, ARM has been around for a while, and they've been in game consoles for a while now too. Like the 3DO has an ARM CPU in it. And yes, Nintendo has been using ARM designs for their handhelds for quite a bit now. The DS has an ARM CPU, as does the 3DS. Anyways, the main advantage to an ARM CPU these days is that at a given performance profile, compared to say an x86 processor, it's a lot more power efficient. It's great for devices like phones where you're expected to have access to them all day long. And heck, even laptops are starting to switch over to ARM processors. Like, if you've seen the MacBook M1, like, listen, I don't like Apple that much, but you can't deny that the M1 MacBook didn't change the laptop industry forever. It proved that laptops with all-day battery were possible, and that ARM processors could be as performant as x86. But now for the big question, what does this really have to do with Valve? Sadly, it's Bradley found some very interesting changes within Steam itself under the hood. Proton, the software layer that lets you run Windows games on your Steam Deck, has an ARM version. And yes, this ARM version of Proton is also being paired with FEX, which allows you to run x86 binaries on ARM. And there are videos of FEX emu running fairly recent games, like the 2018 version of God of War, the PC version. Aside from performance not being that great, it looks like it's running things pretty accurately. Admittedly, I don't know too much about this project aside from what it's supposed to do and how much performance is actually being left on the table. It does look like it's progressing quite nicely. And from what I've seen, if Valve finds a promising project, they will fund it and ultimately use it in Steam. Look at DXVK or Proton. If Fex is able to get funding from Valve as well as help from Valve, then that would be great. That would be a best case scenario for ARM gaming. It means Valve is very serious about this project and what it can do. As the making of this video, this primarily pertains to VR titles. Could Valve titles be coming to, I don't know, the MetaQuest 3? Could Valve be making their own ARM-based PC handheld that runs Steam VR games? All of this is merely speculation as of the making of this video, but it all seems very likely. But one more thing too is that neither Proton ARM nor FEX are exclusively for VR. These work on standard like mobile devices, standard ARM devices. Which leads me into my next big grand theory. The rest of this video is not based on any actual facts that we know about, but rather based on my own conjecture. An ARM-based Steam Deck. Now hear me out, I know that ARM-based processors have a reputation for being weaker than x64 processors. And yes, I understand that's due to phones needing lower power requirements so that they can last longer. But Apple Silicon proved that 
well, ARM processors don't have to suck. And now we're seeing a new influx of Windows laptops using ARM processors that don't suck. They're actually quite good for most workflows. But of course, as Linus Tech Tips showed us, the built-in x86 translation layer in Windows for ARM isn't that great for video games. Will it get better? Yes. Will more games try to make an ARM port to actually support Windows for ARM? Probably. It does seem like a pipe dream, but not even a decade ago, Linux gaming itself was a pipe dream. Linux gaming was arguably worse than Mac gaming, and now it's even better thanks to Valve pouring resources into what would be Proton. While there's no evidence that suggests that Valve wants to pour resources, time, and money into FEX, the fact that they had it listed and want to use it with Proton for ARM means that they're probably going to do so. As of the making of this video, this is all just for VR games, you know, Steam VR stuff. But I don't think Valve is doing this just for VR. I think Valve is doing this on VR first as a sort of testing grounds, and then ultimately moving over to traditional PC gaming. An ARM-based Steam Deck wouldn't just change the processor for arbitrary reasons. I do think there would be benefits, especially when it comes to power and sleep states. But of course, there would be negatives. On top of the Steam Deck already not being able to run certain games due to incompatibility, there'd be even more of an incompatibility issue. An ARM-based Steam Deck would probably be running it through two compatibility layers, FEX and Proton. On. But unlike, say, trying to get Windows applications running on Linux, there's a bigger and more vested interest in trying to get x86 applications running on ARM. Like for example, you can run x86 versions of Adobe on ARM. We've never seen any version of Photoshop run on Linux at all, which tells me there's a much bigger interest in ARM. And yes, regardless of your opinions on Adobe and how much they overcharge and how people would rather just pirate it, the fact of the matter is, is that Adobe actually cares about porting their software over to ARM, which says a lot. The transition from x86 to ARM is going to be a long one, but the fact that some of the most popular productivity suites like Microsoft Office and Adobe Creative Cloud work on ARM-based computers means that it's progressing quite smoothly. Maybe a little too smooth. Maybe it'll happen a lot sooner than we think. But in terms of gaming, it's still pretty far behind. There are a litany of compatibility issues trying to get all of your older PC titles to run on ARM. And of course, one particular category of games are known to not work at all on ARM hardware. Games with anti-cheat, namely those kernel level anti-cheats that you know and hate. Stuff like Easy Anti-Cheat, or Battleye, or stuff like Riot Games' own Vanguard system. None of these currently work on ARM-based devices, even running Windows, like the whole Windows with Snapdragon laptops that you've been seeing around. But as ARM progresses, so too will x86 emulation on ARM. There's a pretty clear demand for ARM on mobile devices, like laptops. But for gaming handhelds, an ARM-based handheld would be kind of insane. An ARM-based Steam Deck would be too soon, but maybe in another 10 years or so we'll see an ARM-based Steam Deck from Valve. But Valve is no stranger to miracles. The Steam Deck was a miracle despite all of Valve's prior hardware being commercial failures. Except for, of course, their VR headsets. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.